Hey everyone, I'm King. Welcome back to King Spade channel. So there's a lot to talk about for the Juno patch. The game has seen slowly had been updated bit by bit for the past weeks or months in other server. Instead of implementing the update progressively into the game like at the Taiwan server and at the Korea server, the SEA server decided to pack all of it into the Juno patch and open it to everyone with just one update. Like a gift box. And not just that, it didn't stop there. Before the Juno patch maintenance, which was scheduled in the morning, the game at midnight dropped an announcement at the Discord and the Facebook page, mentioning more updates will be included for the Juno patch that were not previously planned to be included, or at least not what the game had shown to the players with the Juno patch infographics. It can be overwhelming. So in this video, let's together we with me look at all of the updates that are packed into the Juno patch. Side note, for context and for easier tracking, there are a total of 9 major updates in the Juno patch. Well, obviously there are more, but 9 are the main highlights in this patch, which 5 were publicly or directly promoted to the players and 4 were added on the last minute notes. If you do not pay attention to the patch notes, you might not even know about it. With so much updates, it's going to be a lengthy review if I am going to go through it one by one in detail. Fortunately, I had made separate videos for most of the updates in this patch, providing much more details on the specific updates. I suggest you to go to that video for a more detailed explanation if you want to know more info on the subject or updates that are included in this video. The link to the videos will be at the description and pinned comment. That being said, let's get into it. The first major update is none other than the Juno map. With the Juno map, the maximum best level limit is increased to level 130. With Juno map, there are new monsters and along with that, new monster cards, new MVP and mini boss, and with that, new MVP and mini cards, and also new gold equipment dropped by these new bosses. Life skill level limit is also increased. All this I had covered in several videos. You can find the video link at the description below to know more. Now, what interesting is that the game had made a little fun community activities for the Juno version on Discord. If you have Discord and already joined the ROX official Discord, you can go to the community event channel in ROX Discord and there are two events that you can participate. The Say Hello Juno event and Greeting with Juno Villagers event. For Say Hello Juno event, all you need to do is just to post a Say Hello command following with your in-game unique ID, UID, and you can get one Shadow Equipment Basic Selection Pack and one Stamina Potion. For greeting with Juno Villager event, take selfie photo with NPC or monster or scene in Juno and pause it with your in-game unique ID, UID, and get another one Shadow Equipment Basic Selection Pack and one Stamina Potion. Free stuff for easy simple action. Next update number 2, Dailies Optimization. The daily mission board and COC quest has been optimized. Now you will be directly teleported to the quest and PC or monster's location instantly with the flywing, cutting off the long, slow, lengthy back and forth navigation from NPC to NPC, from monsters to monsters. Now with the flywing function, you can finish doing all 10 daily quests within less than 10 minutes from up to 30 minutes previously. This greatly improve the quality of life aspect of the game, which every game should be aiming for in my opinion. More details on this update in a separate video. Link at the description. Now there is another update that improved the player's quality of life, which is not a pattern in the patch node. Update number 3. You can now select the reward consumption chance, how many times reward you want to get when doing instance. Basically, I guess it means you can get 3 times rewards with just one instance instance run. But this privilege is exclusive only to those who buy the Kafra VIP card. I so 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 want this feature to be available and accessible to the free to play players. It will further save a lot of time playing ROX. But I guess one more reason why 
the game want you to get the Kafra VIP card. Next, number four, new shadow equipment inheritance system. This feature had been discussed among players for quite some time, and now we finally have it. The game finally implement this system in the game. This is super useful if you decide you want to switch job to the other class and bring the shadow equipment progress level to the new job class that you want to use. So how to transfer the shadow equipment level? You need to go to the guild territory. Inside the guild territory, there will be new NPC near the shadow equipment Valkyrie. Talk to the NPC and now you can transfer the shadow equipment level. Important note, you do not need to activate the job class shadow equipment that you want to transfer it to. You just need to unlock the job class using the Book of Travers at the Switch Job NPC inside the Creatura Academy. And that's it. Transferring the shadow equipment need the designated shadow equipment material for the job class and it costs crystals to transfer. Depending on the shadow equipment level, the higher the level, the higher the transfer or inherit cost. Just like transferring the equipment progress to the other job class, there is also an item that you can use to lower down the transfer cost. In this case, for shadow equipment transfer, it is called the shadow essence crystals. This item can lower down 90% of the cost needed for the transfer. How to get it? For now, you can only get it from purchasing it at a game official store. And the price is insane. This is around 320 US dollars. I think you can just, with the same amount of money, you can just buy the diamonds and sell it in-game to convert it to the crystal. You will have more than enough crystals to cover for the transfer cost. You need to look for that alternative if you decide to buy the Shadow Essence item. Next update number 5, new PvP minigame. For more interactive gameplay in the game, ROS has introduced 3 new PvP modes, 2v2, 3v3 and 6v6, with 2 gameplays, Capture the Flag and Rumble Fight. Players can get access to this PvP gameplay from the NPC near the tavern in Prontera City. These PvP modes are a fun mini game that players can have fun with each other. So far, there are no rewards by participating in the PvP game, just a pure excitement, a side entertainment in the game if you want something interesting to do other than grinding all day. More details on the PvP gameplay mechanic at a separate video, the link is at the description. Next update number 6, Star Card Upgrade. With the new MVP and mini boss added for Juno Map, the Star Card list is also added with more cards. More MVP cards can be combined and upgraded to Star Card. What are the new cards added? Watch this video, I explain it here. The link is at the description below. Update number 7, New Enchant Conversion System. Now you can convert your enchant to any city enchant without going through every city enchant one by one. But because of that, there is a new item required for the conversion. You will require the designated city enchant stone for the conversion. To convert your enchant, you can go to the enchant NPC in Aldebaran, situated at lower right part of the map. Update number 8, the Gunslinger job class optimization and adjustment. Now this optimization will sleep in the maintenance nodes few hours just before the maintenance. Players may suddenly feel a major difference in the Gunslinger job class after the maintenance. But you probably don't have the idea what exactly has changed. Fortunately, I had made a video about the Gunslinger optimization previously when it first adjusted in the Taiwan server, the Gunslinger normal attack animation is now faster. The skill execution is also faster. The weapon's attack range is adjusted. It is now has longer shooting range. For more details on the adjustment, you can watch this video. The link is at the description. And lastly, the MVP and mini boss defense is adjusted. After the update, you might notice that your character is not hitting as hard to the MVP as before. This is because the MVP and the mini boss defense had been adjusted. Now this had been also the topic of discussion among players for quite some time. This adjustment had been implemented in the Taiwan server soon after the Juno patch is updated in the Taiwan server. And players saw a significant drop in DPS against the MVP after the update. Most of the job class had been impacted by this update, but the job class that was affected 
the most from the players observation and pass is the light knuckle shooter a dps lost up to 70 percent of damage and the update is finally patched in the sca server alongside with the juno patch and as usual i had also covered about this in another video to know more about the details i recommend you to watch that video the link is also at the description below so these are some of the major highlights for the juno patch a full patch notes is available at the rox official facebook page and also this I will also link the patch notes together with all of the related videos link at the description below. Alright, what do you think of all of these updates? Is it too much? Or is there something else you wish the game to change? Let me know in the comment. That's it for this video. This time video shoutout goes to... Thank you for always supporting me on this channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. And so is, happy playing. Bye-bye.